Oh, Tim, will you come? This is Tim McGill. Cindy's dad. He's another uh, brother by a different mother, but um, I've only, I've only, we've probably only known each other for 18 months, but we just started like hooked in our hearts and um, figuring out how to partner and strategize and do some different things, not only in our school, but in the nations in different places. So will you uh, take it away? Morning. Good morning. Hey, it's uh, so great to be here and uh, be a part of everything that's happening here. Uh, the atmosphere is so refreshing. And uh, so I want to talk to you just for a moment, and then I'm going to turn it over to my lovely wife, Cindy. My daughter, Haley, is here, and uh, her friends. We are just, uh, yeah, we've, we've lived for this day, and uh, Anyway, a uh, quick, very quick story. Um, we were part of Christ for the Nations, Dallas, Texas, early on. Gordon Lindsay was still alive and kicking. And I mean, he was kicking. <laughs> and uh, Frida Lindsay, phenomenal woman of God and uh, matriarch. I don't know what to say. He's, uh, they left a mark on our life and uh, taught us the Bible. But they did more than teach us the Bible. They helped define for us uh, what the gifts of the Holy Spirit were and how they operate. And uh, so I stepped away from a small country town in Oregon that was primarily farming and logging and, and came to Dallas, Texas, and I knew nothing or very little about God, the Bible, or anything. I just stepped into the middle of this atmosphere. It was overwhelming. I, I honestly, I didn't know what was going on. And over the next probably nine months, I watched what were the the messengers of the voice of healing. These were men and women who traveled the country for 15, 20 years, and night after night after night packed out auditoriums, tents, where night after night, the sick were healed. They emptied hospitals, Amen. all right? And, and that is not an exaggeration. And so, uh, so the reality of two kingdoms settled into my spirit before I ever left there and has carried us through 40 years of ministry. I understood something from that experience that there are two kingdoms at operation in this earth, and one is a transcendent kingdom. And the principles of that kingdom, the laws of the kingdom, the substance of the kingdom, the reality, everything, the resources, whatever you have need of, is so far transcendent over anything else in this earth. And if we can just connect with that kingdom, all things that pertain unto life and godliness are ours. All right? And it's real. And uh, so a lot of these things, you know, we learn in the trenches. We, in our first uh, church pioneer effort, uh, Cindy and I, mostly me, uh, decided that we would step out and pioneer a church in all the places, Provo, Utah, right? Now, Provo, Utah is a unique place in that it is the home of Brigham Young University. It's where all the missionaries are trained, and I thought, you know, when, when I was in, younger, they said in, uh, in football, whoever hits the hardest, you know, comes out on top. I just want to tell you that's a lie, all right? <laughs> but I carried it with me. So I thought, we'll go to the hardest place, and we will see God do something. So Brigham Young's great-great-granddaughter, one of who knows how many hundreds of them, all right, in the area, interviewed us and asked us why we were in Provo, Utah. We said we're going to start a church. And she asked us, why does Provo, Utah need another charismatic church? And uh, so we told her. So we launched the church. And we'd heard about spiritual warfare. We, listen, guys, it was almost like a mini version of the book of Job. Yeah. Yeah. It's like one in one week period of time. It's like I got a phone call and a guy said, hey, listen. <clears throat> Yeah, the carburetor manifold off of your high-performance vehicle has been stolen and we don't have insurance. 
So, and oh yeah, by the way, we can't get your transmission. So there it's set. It was just like one thing after another, after another, after another. And then it was, it was just a mess and we're trying to get a church established in one of the most difficult regions, in my opinion, uh, at the time in the U.S. So, what do you do? I didn't have a mailing list. My mailing list was Cindy and my two girls. That's it. <laughs> I went into my office and uh, I, had a, I had a corner office in an office facility, okay? Businessmen over here, businessmen over there. And I am so frustrated, and I know you've probably never been this way. I was so frustrated, I was so angry because of all the setbacks. And up on my wall was just one verse of scripture that it's the only plaque I had on my wall, right? And it was 2 Corinthians 9 8. God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you always have it all sufficiency in all things abound unto every good work it made me angry i looked at that and i thought that is not even close to what i'm experiencing so i sat there and i sat there and finally it's almost like a night light clicked on let god be true and let everything else be alive so i stood up and i started praying and i began to pray and declare in my corner office in Provo, Utah, God is able to make all grace abound towards us. And as I went and continued, it, the anointing of God kind of got involved in it. It was like God began to overlook the fact that I was a little angry. So I'm going. And it's getting a little louder, and so I kind of forgot where I was at. Tongue, I mean, I am full on Pentecostal in the side office. One guy clears out over here. They, they start clearing out of their offices. <laughs> it's fine with me. I don't know, one hour, two hour, three hour, four, I don't know how long I was in there. Finally, when I started going hoarse, I guess I thought, well, I probably shouldn't call it a day. <laughs> So left, went to bed that night, had a visitation from the Lord. Can't go into the details of it. It is not the time in that sense. But I can tell you this much. I'll give you just one little snippet. In the last part of this visitation, I discerned somebody gave me a gift of a parrot. Listen, I just want to give you a heads up. If anybody wants to give you a gift of a parrot, don't ever take it. <laughs> Somebody gave me a gift of a parrot and sat on my shoulder and it was in my ear nonstop. And in this encounter, I discerned that the parrot was a lie. I grabbed it and threw it in the fire. Okay, I had a fire in my fireplace, threw it in the fire and it became some like an old rusty horseshoe. And it came out of this thing and waves of the anointing were coming over me and just wave after wave. We got up the next day Got a phone call from a pastor uh, in Salt Lake City. He said, I was talking about you guys at the Bible school last night. He says, well, I just thought I should take up an offering for you guys. Wow. And I was like, <laughs> I'm trying not to cry. <laughs> you know, oh, okay, thanks. And he says, we're going to bring it down. Well, he came down that day in the mail. Uh, money came in from a city in the U.S. that I didn't even know existed. Dated the same day I was in the office interceding and praying. And God began to speak to me because it took care of all of our needs. I'd never seen a check that big, you know, for us. And God began to speak to me. And he says, that day in your office, you tried your circumstances in the fire of my word. Jeremiah says, it's not my word like unto a fire. So I tried the circumstances. It was that green parrot nonstop. How many of you had that voice? in your head 24 7. it's like elevator music it's just background right you tried my circumstances in the fire of god's word and it proved to be a lie let god be true and let everything else be a lie all right now 
I'm going to receive an offering. Okay? And, and we are going to believe God that all the needs of not just this conference, but connected to this conference and beyond, there are there is orphanages, there's an outreach in Mexico, there are all these things that we want to see get accomplished. Anything above and beyond goes directly back out into extending the gospel into this earth. I want you to take a risk with me. All right, we're gonna we're gonna sow into this thing today, based on the principle that there is a transcendent economy system that we're gonna connect with. It is better than Wall Street, I'm telling you guys, and it's more real, has more substance than anything that we can push in this earth. All right, and I'm said they're they're passing out the the envelopes. If you need an envelope. Uh, raise your hand, and then as um, soon as they get that out, I'm, I'm going to have you stand up, and then I'm going to we're going to pray together, and we're going to believe together as a family, as a community here, because I felt like the last time I left here several weeks ago, I felt like God spoke to my heart and said, uh, revival, a visitation is going to go throughout the earth from Minneapolis, St. Paul area. Something God is going to do something here that is going to be exported into the nations, and it's already started. I, I mean, I, I I can't tell. I've been a lot of places, guys, seen a lot of people, and I have never had the the pleasure of hooking up with two more crazier people than Craig and Susie. This has just been awesome. <laughs> And Craig doesn't like to sleep any more than I do, so this is awesome. Anyway. Okay, has everybody got their thing? All right. Okay. Would you stand with me just really quick, and let's—we're going to pray and we're going to believe God. Not that you haven't, but we'll just take it another step. Father, we just thank you so much, Lord. I want to thank you for the church in Minneapolis, St. Paul, and this region. Lord, I, I am so mindful of the fact that people have come from a long distance to be a part of this group because there's hunger and there's, and there's something on the inside of them that wants to see the reality of what they have read in the Word of God and heard over the years become part of their experience. And so God, I am, I am mixing my faith, whatever faith that you have put in my heart, whatever seed, whatever anything, You've invested in me, Lord. We just come boldly to the throne of grace this morning, God, to take hold of the provision and the resources of heaven. God, we know from your word that windows open and windows shut in heaven. And God, I am asking because of the faithfulness and the intercession of so many that are represented here today, that God, you would open those windows of heaven right now, that the anointing of the Holy Ghost and that breaker anointing that has been prophesied would begin to advance right now over this time in Jesus' mighty name. God, we ask that every hindrance and opposition to the provision that needs to be supplied to see this move forward. Right now we declare, let that anointing that breaks every yoke, every fetter be released in Jesus' mighty name. Grace, 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 grace over the lives of everyone here. Multiply seed sown. And thank you, God, for the release of your provision and the blessing upon your people. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. All right. Let's go for it, gang. You'll be seated. They'll pass out the plate. They're up here. We're coming forward. Let's march.